Hi everyone, welcome to my IG Live today. I am talking all about childhood eczema. And this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart because I was one of those kids with eczema. I was born with eczema and it was so severe that when I was a baby, I would scratch my head so much that all of my hair fell out. Um, I was in and out of the doctor's office for pretty much all of my childhood life suffering with eczema and you know just like everyone else here probably i was using steroid cream after steroid cream bleach baths and really not getting anywhere so quick a uh, little synopsis of my story i ended up getting really frustrated with conventional medicine i was pre-med i decided okay i want to you know become a dermatologist and unfortunately I did not find those answers. Um, also, probably why you guys are here at my live today, you probably aren't finding your answers as well too. So I ended up going to naturopathic medical school and I ended up really getting to the root cause of eczema. I'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, I will go more in depth in my free my, uh, live masterclass that is tomorrow, but I'm gonna give you a little taste of that today. And so getting to the root cause, um, you know, I healed myself completely. That was almost a decade ago. I have been eczema free and I am so lucky now in my practice to really be working with people who have eczema, children, adults, um, who are really suffering from eczema and also other types of chronic disease, but eczema is near and dear to my heart. So I do wanna talk about that in length today and let's focus on childhood eczema because this is such a big problem in today's world. Um, unfortunately, it's like my friends, my patients, I'm just seeing this as one of the biggest problems in um, pediatric medicine right now is eczema. Uh, and I think it was really great. I, I did a post and somebody, um, you know, came on the post and said I, that she works at a child care center. She owns a child care center. And she said, this is a huge problem. She sees eczema in all of her kids. And this is a huge problem. And why is it happening? So, you know, just kind of really quick, I'd like to just give you the, the theory behind my process. If you wanna know more about this, come to my free live masterclass tomorrow. I will go in depth, I'll show you slides, I'll really break it down. But when we kind of get down to the root cause and make it really simple, I like to say everyone has a funnel. I call this your detox funnel. All of us have it, kids, adults, et cetera. And what fills that funnel are things like toxins, fat, and hormones. And when that funnel overflows, what happens is, um, you know, toxins can't get out their normal pathways like your gut and your kidney, leaving your body through poop and through urine. And so when that can't happen, what happens is your body tries to protect itself. And where do you think it puts those toxins when it's trying to protect itself? It's trying to protect all of your really important organs. So what happens is these toxins just float out of the body through your skin. And this is a big reason our babies are having eczema those little bodies are protecting themselves from the toxins that are in their body. Now, your next question might be, well, where are they getting the toxins? They just, they were just born. And unfortunately, um, I did write an article about this. You know, we are getting those toxins from our moms, unfortunately, right? So my problem was my mom had all these amalgams in her mouth. Amalgams are metal fillings and those metal fillings are made of 50% mercury. So I was born with mercury toxicity. And how did that happen? Well, in my mom's, uh, when I was in her belly, through the placenta, unfortunately, all these toxins are transferred to our babies. So in the body, in her body, um, those toxins transferred onto me. Then when I was born, she was breastfeeding me and she was breastfeeding me and unfortunately, yet again, those toxins are gonna spill into the breast milk and into your baby. So she was told by her pediatrician that I was allergic to her breast milk and in reality, it was, I was, you know, in some ways I was allergic. I was actually getting toxicity from her breast milk. So somebody asked one of their questions for today's IG Live was, you know, is it possible that my baby is getting, you know, um, 
increase toxins from my breast milk? And the answer is yes, 100%, absolutely. Uh, I'm actually gonna be releasing a podcast about this soon where I am interviewed a woman who started a company where you can actually get your breast milk tested. And um, you can test to see what heavy metals are in your breast milk and see if they're leaking into your baby. Now, my suggestion for this is, you know, prior to getting pregnant, everybody should detox because we are actually spilling all of our toxins into our babies. And that is the reason that so many kids, so many babies have eczema nowadays. And I know that this is hard to hear for a lot of parents because um, it, it makes you feel like it's your fault. And I would like to invite you to not think that. It's not your fault. You didn't know that this was happening. You didn't know you had to detox prior to. And now you know. So, um, you know, if you're gonna have a baby in the future, it's time to detoxify now. And if you have a baby with eczema, we need to detox that little baby. Um, children, adults, etc. But it's not any different for a child. Um, you know, I, I, I write all these posts and I say, you know, eczema is really just uh, that your liver is burdened, your gut is burdened, your kidneys are burdened. And I think parents get really, um, you know, they're like, well, how is that possible, you know, with my little baby? And unfortunately, it totally is. Um, those little babies, of course, can have toxins just like us and their detox pathways, their their organs are not fully developed yet. When a baby is born, it's still actually developing outside of the womb and mom is still attached to that ba baby via breast milk. So one asked, you know, uh, one person asked, you know, well, should I stop breastfeeding if I'm giving my baby toxins? No, I, I don't think that's the answer because your breast milk is actually very nutritious for the, your baby and the, one of the best things your baby can get. But we probably need to detox you, but not in a way where those toxins are gonna spill out more so into your baby. We need to make sure that we are binding up those toxins and getting those toxins out in a different way. So uh, there's very specific things we need to do if you are breastfeeding your child and your child has eczema right now. So I, I would say don't say, to yourself, oh my God, I just need to stop breastfeeding. Uh, we actually need to work and we'll do some work together. We need to clean you up, but we need to be very particular with how you clean. We clean you up and we need to start cleaning up your baby. There are very safe ways to go about cleansing an infant, a baby, um, you know, and you do have to work with someone like myself who's a naturopathic doctor to do that. Uh, you definitely don't want to do this on your own, okay? Um, next question somebody had was, you know, that their um, dermatologist is just telling them to use Aquaphor. Oh my gosh, I remember using this so much when I had eczema. Um, and Aquaphor is like, it's it seems to me like it's the dermatologist answer to everything. Like, just keep it lubricated, you know? And you know, if you have eczema, this is not an answer. I mean, it's keeping it moist and that's great. Um, people with eczema do have a uh, lower moisture in their skin. And so doing something like Aquaphor can seem to help. Um, this is not an answer. This is just a topical answer, right? This is just something that's keeping moisture in the skin. And that is only one of the problems that's happening with eczema. Um, I do have a solution though. Instead of Aquaphor, I do like something called Waxaline. Waxaline is a natural Vaseline. Um, and there, there um, sometimes people do have sensitivity even to Waxaline just because of some of the ingredients there, but it is um, an organic and a really great uh, uh, replacement to Aquaphor or Vaseline. So it's called a Waxaline, okay? So that's my answer for the Aquaphor question. Another person had a great question. She said, you know, my baby, um, my baby's eczema flares every time my baby's heated up. And this is really, really important. Um, so what is happening when your body's getting heated up? Well, um, you, are, uh, you are increasing your metabolism and what's gonna happen is toxins from your tissues are actually gonna try to push out of your body through sweat, right? And those toxins are gonna actually circulate through the system when the body gets heated up. And so what's happening? Well, heat rash, which is something that happened to me all the time. I remember I would be at um, like Disneyland and it, I would wanna have so much fun, but unfortunately I was so hot and I remember like, oh, scratching so much. So those of you with eczema know what this feels like. If you have kids with eczema, oh, 
it's just not fun because your kids should be having fun at these really fun places. And unfortunately, the heat is causing that increased metabolism and all of those toxins are trying to leak out of the body. And so that is why you might see flares with heat. Now, does that mean you shouldn't get heated up? Well, no, actually one of the things I really highly suggest is for my eczema patients to get in the sauna and sweat it out and increase that metabolism so those toxins can come out of your system. Um, but we have to do that, you know, knowing that we're doing that and potentially using things like binders and other things to bind up the toxins as they're coming out into the system. Also, before you sweat and you push those things out of the body, it's really important to get your organs of detoxification working. And that's what my program is about. It's, you know, the detox funnel. I say it's four things you really need to focus on is your gut, your kidney, your liver, and your bile. Your bile is really important. I'll be doing some posts about that later this week. It's really important to get those organs moving because if you just sweat and you just you know, release those toxins, they have nowhere to go, um, then that's gonna be a problem. Your eczema is gonna get worse, okay? Someone's asking, do vaccines at birth cause eczema and febrile seizures because my daughter only received the vitamin K and she got eczema and seizure at one year old? Um, so, you know, I think any, my answer to that is anything we put into the body that's foreign potentially has a problem to fill the funnel, okay? Anything that's foreign. And of course, even in something like a vitamin K shot, you have foreign proteins that are gonna be in the body that can need to be detoxed through the system, et cetera. Um, you know, so if your child had jaundice, it, you know, like all of those things, it just kind of tells me more about the system and other things that you're gonna put into the system may cause that funnel to overflow if the funnel is already full. So if you had already given your baby all these toxins through your placenta or through your breast milk, um, and now your baby's being exposed to all of these environmental toxins through medication, vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, um, food, et cetera, your breast milk, et cetera, then um, now your baby's funnel is gonna overflow. So sometimes it overflows right at birth. That was me. I was born with this problem because my mom had those amalgams and gave me all those toxins in the womb and then every day through her breast milk. Some people notice that it doesn't happen until like 14 months. Could it have been because of a vaccination? It's hard to say, right? We do need to um, do some work to kind of understand it a little further. We can do testing. We can test for things like aluminum and heavy metals and lead and mercury, et cetera. Uh, we can do hair tests for little kids. Um, for adults, we can do urine tests and all of these things can really help us to understand what toxicities are in the system. Other toxins we might look into are things like mold, um, you know, environmental toxins like BPA and glyphosate. You know, were you eating organic through your pregnancy? If you weren't, potentially you were uh, getting exposure to pesticides and those pesticides were going on to baby, okay? So we have to think about this differently. At my master class tomorrow, I will be going to a lot of depth about this and I can really answer your questions, you know, one at a time and really you guys can um, kind of break down what's going on and I can answer those questions. So if you guys want to come to my master class, I'm going to show slides and really kind of get into the science of it. Somebody asked me, what are the facts that back up? Um, you know, what I'm talking about. And in my program, I do give all of those studies. Um, in my master class tomorrow, I'll show you some studies that kind of prove that um, uh, environmental toxins can really cause dermatitis, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, all the versions of, of eczema that are out there, okay? Um, someone's asking, what is a good amalgam holistic dentist? Great place to find an, a holistic dentist. It's called a biological dentist is iabdm.org. Again, iabdm.org. You'll find a great biological dentist there. And that is kind of like me. They're kind of they're kind of like a holistic dentist. They are dentists, um, but they actually get extra training in being a holistic, and it's called biological dentistry because biological dentistry means that they're not just thinking about your mouth, they're thinking about your whole entire body, and that's what's important. Um, your mouth is, you know, it's just your mouth. We need to think about how everything we're putting in your mouth is actually affecting the rest of your body. Um, I believe it's iabdm.org. Yep, iabdm.org, I believe. So I think you're actually, you moved the A in the wrong place. 
And if you're, if that's wrong, uh, just um, uh, look up Biological Dentistry Association and you'll find that there. And you guys can find a biological dentist anywhere locally. Sometimes there's um, great ones in your area. Sometimes you got to travel, right? Depends on where you guys are located because uh, I know you guys can be all over the world here. So, um, so that's a great option is iabdm.org because those dental toxins are a big deal. It's not just amalgam fillings, but it's also um, root canals. Those can be a really big problem too. Uh, one, of the, one of the most interesting cases I had was I had a patient who came from the Philippines. He had seen like all these doctors. Um, he's in his uh, 60s or 70s and had seen all of these doctors and had this huge rash on his leg and no one could figure it out. And we ended up seeing each other and I said, you know what, um, I think we need to check your root canal. And so he went to my biological dentist here who I love and, um, and he went to see that biological dentist, got his root canal removed completely um, because a root canal is really just a dead tooth in your mouth and it's the only type of medicine where we keep something dead in your body, it's pretty crazy. So that dead tooth could actually be rotting and getting infected and you would never know it because um, the nerves are not there, right? It's a root canal. So you wouldn't actually necessarily have pain if a root canal is a problem. So this is why root canals are, are a big problem. And he got that root canal removed. Within two weeks, the the skin rash was almost like 70, 75% gone. And after that, all we had to do is detox the rest of those toxins. And what could be growing in your root canals are things like parasites and, um, you know, bac uh, bacteria and, um, you know, other like yeast and fungus and mold. I mean, there's so many things that can be growing in that root canal, okay? My husband has issues with his feet. His nails are thick and yellow. Any thoughts on this cause? Okay, yeah, so we might be looking at like a fungal issue and the fungal issue actually could be more internal. So when you see anything on the skin, really the first thing you guys always wanna think is, well, what's going on internally in my body? So if there is, let's say, fungus um, or uh, growing on the nails, then it's a possibility that internally the microbiome is really imbalanced. And that's what we need to do is we need to balance that microbiome. That's one of the parts of my program is cleaning up the gut. So there's four protocols, clean gut, clean kidney, clean liver, and clean bile. And if we get all of these organs working well, then those toxins are gonna get out of the body. And at my masterclass, I will talk about how we actually do that. Like what are the steps to actually do that? Um, so you guys can join that tomorrow, as I said. Um, but yeah, so I think what we would wanna look at is the gut, and we wanna really think about cleaning up the gut. But not only that, all of those organs of detoxification, I want you guys to think about like, like you have a garbage and you haven't like thrown out any of the garbage for decades of your life, what's gonna happen? Bugs are gonna grow in your system, right? So like bacteria will grow and fungus will grow, et cetera. So, so that's the problem. And we're like little garbage cans harboring, um, you know, microbes that shouldn't be there and harboring toxins that shouldn't be there. And you see this on the outside as acne, as eczema, as these outward problems, as the nail fungus, et cetera, okay? All right, and someone's asking, where is your masterclass taking place? This is a completely virtual masterclass. It's at 4 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, Pacific Standard Time. Um, so uh, you can go ahead and, uh, the link on my website, which is cleanbody.health, that's actually, that's my um, company's website. Uh, at the top, you'll see a couple buttons. You'll see there's a free assessment. You guys can take that. You can see how full your funnel is. There's my free live masterclass, which is um, gonna be tomorrow. It will be live just like this. I will be answering all of your questions. And then the lastly, there's book a consultation. So if you guys are watching this and you're kind of like, I wanna find out what toxins I have. I wanna find out how full my funnel is. We can do a lot of testing to figure that out. And yes, we can do that for your babies and your kids as well too. We can test things like your breast milk for moms who are breastfeeding. We can test hair tests to check for heavy metal toxicity. Uh, we can do a lot of different tests to check for autoimmune disease, et cetera. So um, these tests will help us to understand how full the funnel is, how we're gonna clean it out, okay? And then lastly, the last question someone asks is products. 
Um, he said, I think he has a nine-year-old with eczema. Where can he buy detox products? Well, we do sell my detox products on our website, um, cleanbody.health. Um, but if you kind of want to know how to use those, there's a couple of ways to go about that. Um, we do have that discovery consultation. That's probably the best way to go so that I can actually meet you. Um, and you would go to cleanbody.health and then those buttons at the top, there's one that says book a consultation for the person who just asked. So you can just book a consultation and, um, and then we'll meet and we'll meet virtually and we'll kind of figure out what testing is needed. If testing is needed, do you just need to detox your funnel? If you're a child, we need to do different things. So I kind of need to figure out what, um, what it would look like for you. If you feel like you just want the education, we also have a course on our website. It's called the Essentials Course, and that's a possibility. You could just get the education, and then you could buy the products, and then just do the detox on your own as well, too. Okay? How does it work for a four-year-old testing? Where would you start, and would you recommend doing a detox for a four-year-old? Sounds so yum. Yes, 100%. I know it sounds scary. You have to work with someone like myself, a naturopathic doctor who um, knows how to detox a kid. Um, but we can do this and we can do it very safely. Where would the tests go here? So um, stool test, if we could collect it, if you are able to collect the stool for your kid, um, this is gonna be really helpful. So it just kind of depends if we're able to, you know, um, then we can collect that stool. What that stool is gonna tell us is the health of the gut, which is one of those important detox organs, right? So we're gonna find that out. The next thing we really need to find out is, okay, are there any toxins that are a problem? And one way we could do that is hair. So, you know, I know we would have to take a little piece of your kid's hair, but um, it can actually tell us a lot in terms of like minerals and also heavy metals. And that's where I find a lot of our kids have aluminum in their system, they have mercury, they have lead. Okay, and so that can be a big problem with eczema. And yes, it can be from mom, it also can be from environmental exposures. Um, for a four-year-old, um, we may also want to do a food intolerance panel, and that's a finger prick. And so we, um, so you can actually collect it at home, or you can actually go somewhere and get it collected as well too. So we don't need to do a full blood draw. We can actually do a finger prick and check in with um, the food intolerance. And if we need other types of tests, potentially we could do a blood draw, um, but you know, it's a little harder, of course, with a four-year-old, so we wouldn't always necessarily do a blood draw unless I felt it was really needed, okay? That's kind of what testing would look like for a four-year-old or like anybody who's an infant up until, you know, maybe like 10 years old, nine years old, those are some of the tests I would do. Um, te uh, testing that like for kids who can collect their urine, uh, we might do urine tests. So in the urine test, we can actually um, do like environmental toxin panels, we can do mold testing, um, and that will kind of give us a little more uh, broader of a look at what toxins are there. Um, but there's always kind of a way to figure it out if we uh, feel that there are, there are those exposures that we wanna see. What natural items can be used to help relieve itching? Um, so I think that the Waxeline was a really good, um, I mentioned it earlier, you know, what's the replacement for Aquaphor? Um, it's, Waxeline is a really good one. Um, in my practice, I prescribe things based on what's going on with the patient and why there's a problem. So in terms of, um, like I, I prescribe things like vitamin creams. Now, why would I do that? Well, a lot of these, um, eczema people, they can't absorb like all these uh, good nutrients and then get it to the skin. So we actually can prescribe vitamin creams and that deliver those vitamins right to the skin. And that can be really helpful to get that um, onto the skin and that it can really help to heal the skin a lot quicker. So that's another option. That is a prescription. It's a compounded vitamin cream. Um, so yeah. Get prepared with five to 7,000 people, not worth. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. Um, my daughter's allergen tests have come back negative every single time. We've gradually tried to eliminate dairy and some processed foods. Do you think help? Yes. So I have actually another answer for that. So like allergens are a little different from intolerances. So I mentioned that we might do like a food intolerance. That's different from an allergy, like an allergy test. An allergy test oftentimes is a prick 
or if they did a blood draw, they would have done an IgE test. And I'm talking about measuring some other antibodies to look for food intolerance. Now, food intolerance is a little different. Um, it can be a, a, a little bit delayed when you have a reaction. It also could be just a low level reaction. And so it's a little different and it can really help us in a different way. Um, always though, my answer is we have to look at the detox organs. So like, I used to be super allergic to shrimp. I couldn't have it, I couldn't eat it at all. And after I cleaned up all my detox organs and cleaned up my funnel and flushed everything out, I can eat shrimp now. Now I, I choose not to really eat too much shrimp, but um, I can eat it and I have no allergy to it whatsoever. So that is like how I want you guys to look at allergies is that oftentimes the funnel is just full and um, potentially you wouldn't be allergic after the funnel was cleaned up. Okay, and so, so important for our kids and our babies. This is so important because we need to start now, right? We don't wanna wait until later on. Like for me, my mom had no idea. So instead, um, you know, I just kept putting steroid cream all over my body. Then I got IBS, which is gastrointestinal problems. And then I got migraines. And then I was getting sick all the time. And that's because no one was getting to the root cause. That is the problem, okay? Do you detox children that got vaccines in the schedule due to this? Yes, I do. It is one of the biggest things that I do is detoxification from um, the adjuvants that are in vaccines. And we use things like homeopathy is one of my favorite ways of doing that. I also use things like herbs and very gentle detoxifiers for our kids. What I find is that our kids are so um, vital, right? They're so vital that that it's not too difficult to detox them. Someone like myself, you know, someone who's lived like four decades of my life, like if I had to detox right now and I had super severe eczema, I have to really do the most severe version of a detox. And that I'm gonna talk about at my masterclass tomorrow. Like what is that most severe version of detoxification? For the kids, we're actually doing more gentle detoxifiers. Um, so I have to assess the patient. I have to understand, you know, um, what can we do that we can do safely and, um, and, and you know, and that's what, how we approach it. Where are you located or is this all done through FaceTime and we book locally? Yes. So um, Sierra Brooke, um, we are completely virtual uh, because I actually am doing a lot of testing and those tests are going to be local to you. Now, there are some caveats in terms of how I can treat in California. I can full on treat you as a doctor. I am a licensed physician here. If you are in other states, then I am doing wellness consultations where I will make suggestions for tests that you can do um, and then uh, still make my um, kind of wellness um, suggestions for you. Um, and that information we can talk about on the at the Discovery Consult. And you know, I'm gonna kind of guide you and potentially your local doctor, your local naturopath in terms of what you guys should be doing in terms of testing. Um, and if you're in California, great, I can completely treat you in, in many states, I can give you a lot of support, okay? Um, and those tests are usually done in the comfort of your home. We send you the kits and then you collect a lot of those tests at home. And then I like to use Quest a lot of the time. So Quest is located all over the country. So that's great. That's where you'll get your blood draws. Okay. All right, guys. Um, uh, do NDs go to the regular residency? That's a great, um, that's a great question. NDs, we are naturopathic doctors. We go to a completely different um, medical school. It's called Naturopathic Medical School. Um, and we get licensed with an ND behind our name. We do naturopathic residencies. Um, so we don't do an MD residency. We do naturopathic residencies. But our uh, model is completely modeled after conventional medicine. So we do four years of, of medical school. We take board exams at the same times that the uh, conventional doctors take board exams. And we also do residencies as well too. So um, it's modeled after that, um, that conventional approach. 
Um, so that's a great question. And where am I located in California? I am located in um, Redwood City, California. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, that uh, we are virtual. We're completely virtual now. Um, I actually did have a physical practice in Mountain View, um, but because we're getting so many patients from outside of Mountain View, I did decide to go completely virtual. A lot of what we do is we test you and we really see you know, what toxins are inside of you. And then I build programs to really um, detox you. And then you have myself and a coach to really lead you through the process, okay? Do I take insurance? Um, naturopathic doctors in California do not take insurance, um, but what we do do is we give a super bill. And when we give that super bill, it's like a receipt that you can submit to your insurance, and then you can ask your insurance to get reimbursed, and a lot of my patients do get reimbursed, okay? How do we pay and get started? Um, first thing is I would say go to my website. The link is on my um, in my profile. It's cleanbody.health, um, and you can book a consultation. That is really the first way that um, that we can really get started is just book that consultation, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assess you. I'm really gonna try to understand what's going on with you. And then I will lay out a whole plan for us because everyone's gonna be different, right? If you're a child, if you're, if you're an adult, if you're super severe, if you're not as severe. So not everybody needs the same kind of support. And it's, I want to give to you what I wanted when I had eczema. I want to give you as much support as I think you really need. Um, so, you know, I want to hold your hand. We have an app. We have you journal every day. Your coach keeps you on track with everything. I keep you on track with everything. And it's what I wanted when I had eczema. I wanted someone to hold my hand. So, um, so yeah, so join, um, join our masterclass tomorrow if you'd like kind of more information and really to understand uh, what what we're doing in my practice a lot more or just book a consultation and um, and then we can just chat and uh, in your consultation what you'll do is you'll upload labs and um, if you have them with from your doctor and you'll just tell me all of your health history and then I will figure out you know what's the best route for you okay is the super bill something where payments can be done or did you say most insurance companies will cover it yeah no problem so a super bill essentially you're gonna pay for everything up front after that, we give you what's called a super bill. And the super bill is something you can submit to your insurance. And um, and then your insurance will say if they're going to uh, reimburse you or not. Prior to starting care with me, I often let you know that you should maybe just call your insurance and say, hey, I want to see this naturopathic doctor. Here's her MPI number. Here are the codes she uses. Will you reimburse me? And then we can have an idea of, you know, what kind of reimbursement you're going to get so that you're, you know, you understand that before we get started. Is it possible to have hives and it not be allergy intolerance related? Um, my answer to that question is probably going to be different than other people. My answer to that question does come from not only my personal experience, but all of the experience I have treating skin disease, hives, eczema, psoriasis, like all of these problems. And a lot of times, even my headache patients will have hives. And, you know, in my opinion, it is always that the detox funnel is full. It's overflowing. And so you're seeing these hives pop up. People get these hives heat rash type of hives. They get hives when they're cold. They get hives, um, you know, when they've drank too much alcohol. And all of it is the funnel overflowing and these toxins trying to get out through the little places in your skin and all over the body, okay? Yes, so how about getting hives and not eczema? So hives is still the funnel overflowing. Um, and hives may come before eczema. So you might see hives first, and that's because the toxins are just trying to release. My opinion on that is help them to release. Get in a sauna, sweat, um, you know, really help these toxins to get out, okay? And do I think it has to do with diet? It absolutely, that's just one of the pieces of the puzzle. It's one of the things that fills your funnel. So it's one of the things we really need to pay attention to. And absolutely, diet is so important. I think some people think it's 100% of the problem. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. A lot of the times it isn't. A lot of the times it's only gonna be part of it, a part of the puzzle, okay? So like we wanna think of it like a puzzle and the diet's only like one piece of it, okay? Is this recorded? Yes, I am gonna record this. I am gonna post it on my, um, on 
on my Instagram, so you'll see it there as a IG uh, a live uh, TV. Um, IGTV, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, my inner arms have like brown spots and I hate them, they come and go. So I'll end with this. Um, everything that you see on your skin oftentimes is an external representation of an internal problem that's happening. We need to find out what that internal problem is. It's gonna be different for everybody, okay? It's not gonna be the same for you or me, your sister, your daughter, your uncle. It's gonna be different for everybody, but there's always gonna be an internal problem and we always have to be able to figure out what that internal problem is. And that is my job, is to do the testing so we can figure out the puzzle pieces, figure out what are the puzzle pieces for you. Is it? heavy metals, is it environmental, is it mold, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We need to figure that out. Another person said um, that they are going, they wanted to know what the funnel is. Um, I will put this on my, um, on my IG, so just check out the replay of this. If you want to know more about the detox funnel, you can either go to my website, cleanbody.health. You can also um, go to my masterclass tomorrow and you can sign up on my website at cleanbody.health. If you want to know how full your funnel is, then do my assessment on my website and then you could see how full your funnel is, okay? My NPI number, I do not have that memorized. I apologize. If you do um, do a discovery consult with me, uh, we will give all that information to you uh, so that you can call your insurance prior to deciding if we want to kind of work together. And um, I'll give that to you at the discovery consult, okay? Thank you so much, everyone. This was really great. Thank you for um, all the participation. Uh, I will do this again. If you guys have topics that you want me to cover, um, we did childhood eczema today. If there's any other topics you want me to cover, please go ahead and DM me and let me know what those topics are. Or when I post this, uh, you can comment in to the comment box and let me know. Uh, it seems like this is really great. It seems like you guys have a lot of questions. I'm excited to answer them. Um, I know what it's like to be there. And this is my mission. Um, you know, it's my mission to really help those that were in the same place I was. I know not everyone can go to medical school like I did and find out all those answers. I do feel like I found answers for myself. And now I've been really helping other people to figure out those answers too. And that is my mission is just to spread the word, okay? I have options for all financial uh, possibilities. We have a course if you just wanna learn about this. So um, I hope that you've learned something today. And again, if you have any other topics you want me to cover, this was really, really fun. Um, so I will do this again and uh, we'll talk about something new and different next time. And I hope that I maybe get to meet some of you guys at my masterclass tomorrow or uh, in a consultation, all right? Have a great night, everyone, bye.